What's up everyone, my name is Tom and welcome to TechStream. Today, thank you to the guys over at Patriot. We're taking a look at their new Viper Steel Series memory. But first of all, as always, let's roll on that intro. So as I mentioned guys, what we have here is the new Viper Steel Series memory from Patriot. And I must to say, I'm actually really impressed with the performance and also the value for money of this memory. So we're going to go through just a quick thing. Like I said, in the past when we've looked at memory kits, memory is very tricky to review because performance differences between kits is very marginal when they all have the same specs. So we're basically going to be looking at what I actually thought of the memory. I've done quite a bit of different testing on a few different platforms to see if we ever had any issues. We did have some, but the reasons were never down to the memory. So the Viper Steel Series memory. Okay, this is their new memory. You'll have noticed that these um, these heat spreaders, okay, it's just nice aluminium heat spreaders, a black plastic sort of ridged part at the top here. Nice designs, a little bit tall. Um, but they're never really, unless you've got a massive cooler that will only support standard height dims, I can't really see you ever having any problems with height wise. They're not ludicrously tall or anything like that. They do have the white stickers on them. They've always had white stickers. It's, um, it's your warranty stickers. It's your serial numbers, things like that. Hey, if it was me, I'd be peeling these off. I know it says warranty void if removed, but eh, I find them ugly. But um, speaking of warranties, one of the things that is always impressive with Patriot memory, lifetime warranty. Ever have a problem? Speak to Patriot, send them back, you get new ones. The Steel Series kits are available in a massive variety of speeds and capacities, uh, from as low as an 8 gig 3000 megahertz kit right up to a 16 gig 4400 megahertz kit. So big, big choice in options there. Do take this review as only really looking at this particular kit. This is the 4000 kit, but what I say here is pretty much applicable to all of the kits. The only difference is really is as they're produced, they're speed binned by Patriot. They then decide what it becomes. Now, as I mentioned, I have the CL19 timing kit here. This is running at 4000 megahertz. It is available as a 3000 megahertz kit and things like that. Now this particular kit retails at around about 200 pounds here in the UK, but I've been just looking online. And for example, the eight gig sticks of 3000 megahertz memory are 53 pounds each. That's an absolute bargain. I mean, not that long ago, maybe six or nine months ago, you'd have been paying over a hundred pounds for a single eight gig stick. So I do think that these do offer very good value for money. That's a 16 gig kit for just over 105 pounds. You really can't complain about that now. Not when, like I said, six to nine months ago, that would have only got you a single eight gig stick. Prices are pretty much halved. And if you're not in the mood for lots and lots of RGBs and lights, these ones, I think, are definitely something you should have on your radar. So I did some testing on both Intel and AMD systems. Okay, so the AMD systems that I've used are using the newest X470 chipsets using either a Ryzen, a Ryzen 5 2600X or a Ryzen 7 2700. And I also did a bit of testing on an AMD system, uh, AMD, I've already done that, Intel system. Uh, that was only using a Z270 and a 6700K, so slightly older. But I will say, the 4000 megahertz kit on the Intel system, I simply plugged it in, I enabled the XMP, and it worked with no problems. I will say now, AMD, we did not have the same level of success. Now, when it comes to memory, anything that is uh, at a speed higher than is standard for your processor, so for N AMD, anything over 2666, that is considered an overclock, and getting more than that is basically a bonus. But what I did manage to is I effectively enabled the XMP profile for the 4000, so I used the, the timings and the voltages for 4000, but managed to only achieve speeds of 3733, just by manually changing the speed, and that was stable and happy. I did actually manage to get them to run at 4000, but it did involve increasing the voltage a little bit and also decreasing or slackening, increasing the timings. So 
when it comes to AMD, I do say do lots and lots of testing. If you're playing around with overclocking memory, memory overclocks are tricky. You may find that you get better scores with tighter timings at a slower speed than you do with faster speeds at tighter timings. It's the way it all works. I'm not going massively in depth into overclocking memory in here. That's not what this video is for. We're just simply taking a look at this nice memory. So I'm actually gonna bring a bit of B-roll in while I'm still talking. And as I said, on the AMD systems, we did have a couple of small issues, but they were not major. I was still impressed. I've never had any memory that ran at those speeds on those systems. The Intel system plugged it in, enabled XMP, no problems. AMD systems are always a little bit finicky. Now, as always, when it comes to buying memory for AMD, I have always been a preacher of check that QVL list, the quality vendor list. If the memory is on the list for your motherboard, you shouldn't have any problems. So make sure it's on there. And if it is, you're good to go. If not, be prepared to either be doing some tweaking or maybe not quite achieving those rated speeds. These rated speeds are effectively the maximum speeds that these, this memory will run at. So you may not reach it. but. I did, like I said, on Intel without any problems, and on AMD I still got incredibly fast speeds. But having done a bit more digging, I did some overclocking and playing around on the Intel system because I pushed it as far as it would go on AMD at 37.33. And we actually managed a speed of 41.33, so we did manage to increase the speed a little bit more on the Intel system, but that was simply done just by changing the speed. That was leaving timings at CL19 and also leaving the voltage, didn't have to do any playing. So yeah, very impressive. As I have mentioned, though these kits are available in many, many different speeds. So if you are looking for something a bit faster, it's available all the way up to 4400. If you're looking for something that offers great value for money, the 3000 kit is fantastic. Like I said, £53 for an 8 gig stick. Also available are some 16 gig sticks, but I believe they're only available in the slightly slower speeds at the moment. Maybe that will change in the future. So. That's pretty much it for our re review of the Viper memory. Like I said, we basically just to, to, uh, just had a quick look. I've been through what I've done for testing, what my results were. I'm very impressed with the performance of these of this memory in general. I've not had any uh, stability issues or anything like that. Like I said, playing around is always needed when it comes to running memory at anything above what is considered standard speed for your chip. And always remember, your chip and your motherboard combined will affect what memory speeds you can achieve. So you may find that your chip doesn't have quite such a good memory controller in it. Silicon lottery, as we say. So you may not get quite the speeds that I've achieved. You may find that you won the silicon lottery, you have a great memory controller built into your chip, and you can achieve even higher speeds than I did. It's always down to what is called silicon lottery. But the Patriot Viper memory, to me, I consider this to be an enthusiast sort of memory kit that isn't there it's the money has all gone into the sticks the money has not gone into making them look bold and in your face they've basically used a design that they already had i've reviewed the white led kit these are effectively exactly the same heat spreaders but they've changed the color these are steel gray with a black uh, plastic the other ones were black with a white plastic and some leds these ones a little bit more subdued if you're looking at doing a zero rgb build or somewhere where the memory is not even going to be seen so what's the point in spending the money on bling bling I think these ones should definitely be on your list so that's about it for today Patriot Viper Steel Series memory I'm going to give it a massive thumbs up good solid performance great value for money uh, even at the higher speeds there's not anything else that touches everything else at those speeds was always a little bit more expensive just to show that Patriot have decided because they've not filled it full of RGB, they can give you guys a bit of saving on money. Now I'm gonna put some links down below to a few different places as to where this is available to buy because at the moment, the list of where to get it from is a little bit slim. Um, you may find you have to go to a different reseller for a different speed. Some resellers have only got certain speeds. Like I said, this has only just come to the market here in the UK. In fact, it's only really just been released. It was actually kind of announced at CES a couple of weeks ago. Um, but yeah, it's a massive thumbs up for me. If you're building a slightly budget system, definitely check it out. And on that note, guys, that's it for today. So if you've liked this quick little video, taking a look at the Viper Steel series, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down, no problems. As always, any comments, questions, suggestions down below, I always do my best to reply. And as always, if you want to see more of me, click that little subscription bell. And on that note, guys, 
Bye for now and I will be back again next week.